So I see two milestones generally. One is 12 lakh of salary. You can have decent living and you still save some money. And second milestone I see is 36 lakh. Beyond which you know what is your game. Mm. And you keep doing that really well. What conscious steps have you taken towards attaining better salary package? How I look at it is you are a stock and stock ka price is defined by the value it generates and also supply demand, right? So if you are a fresher, you generate a very lower value, but there are a bunch of freshers also. If you if you start with a set of, let's say, 100 freshers, only five will eventually earn b big and because they created much more value. Now, especially in a business, that value comes from having multiple tangential skills. If you just look at yourself as a stock and uh, market will value. You know, in my this thing, buying freedom instead of calling it financial planning is a very key and important factor towards uh, you being able to negotiate better salaries with your employer or the future True. employer. True. 2011, I had this option of buying a land. There was a 10 lakh rupee plot. I had 8 lakh rupees. By the end of 2012, I had 8 lakh. I got some bonus and all of that. 8 lakh rupees, That at that point in time, my monthly expenditure was 25,000 rupees per month. So I had two and a half years or three years, three years of freedom. So I could either buy the plot or I could buy three years of freedom for myself. This is how my thought process was. I bought three years of freedom for myself. So what that happened was, the plot from 2011 to 2015 went up by, it went up 2x. It was actually a good deal. But I think my income levels went up by 30x. So always what helped me negotiate salaries, even with my current employer, was the freedom of three years, four years, five years, you know. Mm. If that freedom was there, my negotiation automatically became good subconsciously. What people often don't understand and which is a very crucial fact in deciding your salary is the industry that you work in. What is the P ratio of that industry? Mm. If you work in industry with P10, you will be paid, let's say, X amount. If you work in a uh, P industry with 20, mm. you're going to pay much more. 40 much more, 80 much more, 90 much more. And PE ratio is basically how much is the ma market value of the company compared to the profits, right? So if a, a manufacturing company is earning profit of 10 crore, it will be valued about 8 to 10 X. Uh, a tech company will be valued, let's say about 40 X. So for the same skill set, if you're in manufacturing, you'll be paid much less compared to if you were in a tech industry. So you should generally be actually moving towards industries which are high P if you can. And you know, to add to all the all of your three points is more about, you know, how do you take risk also? And how do you go and approach people? It's important that you know you should come out of your shell, go and meet people, even if like let's say a hello or you know just share your ambition, what you want to achieve in the organization which you want to join. You you might not get it, right? But you, you can make a recall in that particular person's mind. I think in terms of networking, one more thing was, I mean, at least for me, it was very important to be in touch with colleagues in the same sector mm. yeah. who can sort of, uh, I, I, with trust, who can help you out, right? Uh, that kind of networking, you know, helping them out, taking their help when needed. And over time, it has been a boon to sort of have uh, knowledge coming in from different angles. How do you negotiate salaries with your employers and what are some tips you would give around negotiating effectively? I think the first eight years or ten years of my career, I just didn't negotiate. I thought it was bad to negotiate. I thought, how can I ask for money? The typical <laughs> thought process, right, that I've grown up with. I just have to do my work and they'll give whatever they give. This was the thought process for the first eight, ten years. Then the next ten years was the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> there are two sides, right? One is you're in a large corporate. When you're on a large corporate, you're just not growing above 15%. That's a fact. We all yeah. have to agree. Yeah. Somebody watching this shouldn't be thinking, how do I grow disproportionately in a large because that is happening at You've yeah. taken that choice. You've taken that choice, right? Stability is there and whatever. But I think when you join smaller firms where it is growing, I think that's where disproportionate growth can happen. If your job is visible to one of the decision makers in the company, who are like, let's say there are 10 people who are important, if it is visible to them and you're constantly doing well, I think growth automatically happens. You're not going and hard negotiating. They see their work. You know, mm -hmm. that's where you are you're you're put yourself in a position where ownership is appreciated. I'll just give simple examples of the two jumps I made. The first jump was from a law firm to a sector which I knew nothing about. I was fairly junior in my progression. So that salary negotiation was more of let me try and get how much I can because mm. I'm not really bringing much mm. to that business at that point in time. Now, after spending time in that business, when I moved to Wint, there is a certain amount of expertise. I have the certain amount of extra value I'm bringing in. As Ajinkya said, you know, your price of your stock. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. The price of my stock increased in the five years, which I or three years, which I did there. True. So uh, I think just by understanding uh, what you're bringing to the table, 
you must need to understand how much you can negotiate. You should not go extra. You should not only really go Correct. low. Correct. In fact, one of my tip to all my friend is have a very good HR friend who has access to Nokri portal backend. <laughs> right. If you have that, you will see in this org, mm. this person is getting uh, paid that much. So you know the number, right? Then you can negotiate in and around that. And then what are negotiating leverage you have? If you, your market rate is 20, you cannot get 40, right? That negotiating leverage is only 10% here, 20% here, right? So knowing your market rate is very important mm. and it's easily, for most of the roles, it is easily visible. So I always believe that, you know, your salary will always take care of expense. Wealth creation is part of ESOPs because if I'm in a listed company, if I get the ESOPs, that will help me to achieve my financial goal quickly rather than the salary. I have a counter view here. So I think if you like, if you are working at a sales store, which is a listed company, mm -hmm. then ESOPs do make sense right. because you have a lot of clarity on where the company Correct. is moving. There's a lot of downside protection. If you are in an early, sta early stage startup, uh, ESOPs, you don't know what will it work out. Absolutely. I think if one has like money for let's say five years, five years of freedom mm. or something like that, I think till then one needs cash, right? And post that one can start taking these bets of negotiating for higher ESOPs and so on and so forth. So could you take us through a timeline of your career and how your salary progressed through it? Through the first two years of my career, I switched six jobs. So in a oh. two year span, which mm. is not a bad, which is a horrible decision, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, 2004 started at 8,000, 2011, 12, I was at some 38,000. Then uh, what happened was I joined a, a startup. I wanted to join a startup. What was your salary back then? Before taking the job, it was 5 lakhs. Got After it. taking the job, it was 8 lakhs. So I think 2015, 16, it moved to a couple of crores probably and then a uh, couple of years back I got an offer from one of my previous employers uh, which is about three times the last salary I was drawing and uh, which I didn't take so last four five years I've been running my own business so I come from a different part right like being a corporate salaried guy I started uh, in a very small company uh, so after that I joined uh, a company ICICI Prudential from 20,000 till 26 27,000 I was making over that particular of a time uh, then I took a call and joined back the IT company. I started at 4.5 and then it grows to, uh, when I left in two and a half years, it rose to around 9 lakhs. And then I joined a bigger firm, uh, Tech Mahindra. And that's where, you know, I st started doing global roles. But, you know, unfortunately, the salary, the increment of salary where, you know, you, you where we heard, right. like, what is 25x, 30x, that was not happening in mm. 2020. I actually, you know, met a person and I approached him uh, in, in a company which I'm currently working, uh, Salesforce. So, 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 you know, what I learned is that networking is very important. When I left uh, TechM, I was around, uh, you know, 25 lakhs per annum. And currently, I'm almost making... Uh, three times of what uh, I used to make. I started around 15 lakhs per annum salary. For me, I think the initial years were a very, you know, what I would say Indian parents would love that kind of start. So <laughs> while the salary progression was not bad at all, for the three years I worked there, probably didn't have a single weekend where I didn't work for at least 10 hours. Were you working more than 70 hours a week? <laughs> <laughs> it was around 2600-3000 hours a year. So that you can calculate how much it is a week. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's where I was struggling with the uh, job position. I thought um, this is the right time to maybe try something new. People in law firms, the standard practice was you work till seven, eight years, get a little senior and then move in-house. But I think my thought process was, was very opposite. I was like, at three years now, even if I fail at something new, I can always come back to the law firm. And it's not a bad decision to make to take that risk at that point in time. So I got an offer from a company called Scribbox in Bangalore, but the salary took a uh, dip, right? I think I joined Scribbox at, with my bonus, I would be getting around 25, 26 in the firm. I joined Scribbox at around 23, and then Ajinkya reached out to me. <laughs> so I moved to Wint. Right now, I am at around 50 lakhs per annum. I, when, when I, work, I was working with government of Gujarat, I, I had 25,000 salary, then joined my father's business. Uh, wasn't drawing much, uh, then joined the NGO. I survived there for uh, at about 5,000 rupees a month and then uh, started my first startup. It didn't work out. We didn't dr uh, draw any salaries. Then I joined Credit with there at, uh, and there I got package of, I guess, 22 LPA. After a year, I got about 60% hike. So I was at 36. Uh, then I joined uh, M-Swipe at about 42. 
after six months in MSWIP, I renegotiated my package, increased variable, and took my package to about 56. And then when I joined, when I started Win12, I started at again zero. Then after another two round of funding, we I started drawing 40. What was different in the way you thought about your career in your 20s versus 30s? So I think in the in the 20s, it was just about don't get fired, don't screw up. Uh, just like, you know, do what you're supposed to do. I think that is a survival duration. Yeah. 20s, you're only thinking about, will I be accepted in the job? You're not yeah, thinking correct. about what job do I want or so correct. on and so forth. <laughs> now, I think what has changed is, apart from doing the job right is a given. It, now it's about creating more value for what I do, so that there's a better uh, opportunity, either salary-wise or work-wise. But yeah, I mean, sort of just working towards a better opportunity in the future. I think by mid-20s, late-20s, in, in my case, I started thinking about like probably asymmetric bets where probably there can be uh, the you know returns can be disproportionate. In the 20s, all of that thought was it was just go whatever comes 20, 30 percent, 40 percent hike move. You know, it was like that. I think 30s were more more calculated than the yeah. 20s. So I was more in a hurry mm. uh, in 20s. In 30s, I more think of I'm ready, I'm not in hurry. But I want to increase the probability of success. So again, I think we can have the analogy of stock, right? Short term or yeah, long term? Mm. Yes. Starting with short term, like, you know, stock khareeda 10% growth wa bech diya. Book the profit and yes. keep it. But I'm not thinking that, you know, whether that stock can grow up to 50% also. While your earnings increased, how did you plan your savings or investments, portfolio split? Uh, so what typically used to happen is that when you, in the initial part of your career, right? So you do ad hoc investment so there is no structure there is no goal planning but when you start getting on as you rightly mentioned that oh akada uh, right and when you get to that 36 ka bracket when you start thinking about your goals financial goals emergency funds your life insurance your health insurance your retirement goals your child goals right so that structure actually came into the picture so if if you ask me my split would be um, I think 30% 30, 30 uh, debt and 70 equity. My how much that is in direct stock and how much is in mutual fund? Uh, mostly mutual fund. In fact, you know, in my 70% equity, it also includes my company stocks. How much that would be? You know, whatever is vested should be around 50, 50%. So 35% in mutual funds, 35% in yeah. uh, your own ESOPs and then 30% in, in the debt. debt. Yes. In my case, I always wanted to kind of join a very small company and then I wanted to start my own business. So I considered my career as the equity. So debt instruments and uh, property were, were my investments. 50%, uh, 50 to 60% in debt, 30% in um, real estate, and 10% in uh, equity. Before starting Event Wealth, almost 100% was in debt. Same logic mm -hmm. saying, I will create wealth for myself. Uh, after Event Wealth, I've started increasing that equity. About 50 will be in debt and 50 will be in equity. In the beginning, I was not really into how my money was being invested. It was just my brother sort of saying, hey, just do this. So uh, it has sort of stayed at like a 60 equity, 40 debt split. Right now, I just started increasing my equity side a little bit more. Uh, my equity is mostly in mutual funds. Don't do a lot of uh, stocks. Uh, Does being in high earning positions with major responsibilities impact your mental health and work-life balance? I mean, I wouldn't say more or less stress, but the type of stress is very different, if I had to put it that way. And when I started working, the type of stress was, oh, I should not do my job wrong. Otherwise, something bad might happen. Here, it's not just doing my job right, it's about achieving that goal. So I think the type of stress differs a little more definitely than what it was earlier. I think with age, the maturity comes and then we realize that family is also very important yeah, yeah. because I strongly believe that, you know, uh, you are not your job. So there has to be a life besides your job. True. So I think uh, that's where we need to balance it out. Advice for someone looking to increase their salary in 30. Uh, most of it we already discussed in our conversation, but uh, get out of a comfort zone and do the unusual stuff. That's very important because I strongly believe that if you keep doing the same thing, you will get the same result. And don't fear. Fail earlier, the better. You will learn and move forward. I think um, at the initial stage or the mid stage of your careers, don't get into too much debt. Don't buy like massive houses, flashy cars. Don't increase your lifestyle like crazy, although your salaries go high. Mm -hmm. The other is to keep buying your freedom. I think that will give you the power to negotiate automatically. I don't think you need advice from anyone to negotiate. You will have your own advice because you will have your, you know, Correct. you will have it going within True. you. One of the key things that I've realized in negotiation, the guy who gets the best deal 
is who is ready to walk away from there absolutely right yeah. so if you have freedom you you are free to walk yeah, away yeah. and you will probably have more confidence to even negotiate right okay. what i have realized is choose industry very wisely get into uh, uh, high pe industry and create disproportionate value uh, to just to sum it what all of you have said uh, upskilling and you know getting into factors which are outside your comfort zone <coughs> learning new things which are not expected of you in that job position and if you give that extra then your salary hikes i mean no one can stop you from getting more thank you for watching and supporting our channel if you like the stories we tell here's your chance to be a part of it if you or anybody you know has an interesting financial journey to share then please fill the form in the pin comment below and we'll get in touch with you